Okay, Sean and Ashlyn with the last of a three-part set of Dimensions and Vector Works. My title over here, scooch over. Dimensions and Vector Works. And the first one covered the very basic operations if you've never, never used it before and you need to know how to just create plain old dimensions, uh, check out the first one. The second one talked about creating your own custom dimension style. So if you want you know, arrows instead of uh, tick marks or you want the offset to be different, check out the second tutorial that'll walk you through that. This one's gonna go through all the other stuff that's under here, under the, the tool sets for the dimensions and notes drawer. We're looking for the one that has the little pencil and the ruler, and it's gonna give you this little tool set. Remember, your shape might be different. Don't worry about that. Um, what I've got on the screen now here are a few other objects that we can take a look at for some of these other tools on here. We talked about these two already, but now I wanna do, we'll just jump down here to the angular dimension tool. So if I click on that tool, I'm gonna to zoom down to my little mouse shape down here. And the way I can throw on the dimension, uh, the, the arc dimension of what the distance between these two lines are, you can see as soon as, as I select it, my cursor turns to the little pointy finger, and as I touch an edge, I get a red highlight or orange highlight, uh, click on that once and you can see it's extending a little dashed line just like it does for the regular linear dimension tools. All you have to do is touch the other line and when you click at it again, you can see that you get either wrapping all the way around the other side or if I move it into the middle here, it's gonna give me what I actually want, which is that space right there. So I've got 17.76. You can set the precision of this to you know, a whole number if you want. You can also uh, you know auto rotate it or make it horizontal. I usually switch it over to horizontal uh, so that it's right there in the middle of my dimension line. But again, you have a lot of control in the object info palette for exactly how that reads out, but that's basically the way that you create this angular dimension. Now this other one here, sort of the chord style uh, arc length, I don't use this very often, but every once in a while it becomes pretty useful. If you know that you say you've got, like here's our little tick points here, you know you're gonna put a little piece of trim from here to here and it's gonna be a little bendable, a little plastic trim, and you wanna know, well, what is the actual length that that trim needs to get cut? That's where you would use this tool, and you come in and say, oh, it needs to be three foot eight and three quarter to take a piece of plastic trim and wrap it from here over to here. So that's not actually the length. If I come back in here with my unconstrained dimension tool, and I click from here to here, the same, same two spots, it's gonna be a different number, three, six, and a, a quarter, because I haven't taken into account the curve of the line. If I make this piece of trim three, six and a quarter, it's gonna be short. So that's one thing that this is for. Uh, really, it's kind of a cool tool and you need that. It's, it's, it's hard to, to do a lot of math involved to get that exact length um, if you don't have that tool. So that's, that's, that's pretty cool to check out. Let's see, the, the uh, radial dimension tool is does what it would imagine. You would imagine it would do. It's got a bunch of different modes though. So we can say, we're gonna start with the internal diameter mode. So if I click on a circle thing and say, all right, it's gonna snap right to my corner and I'm gonna say, there's my radius. Well, actually I'm in, in radius mode here um, so that it's got the radius at two foot nine and seven eighths. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can make that um, look. So for example, maybe you want it to actually be on the little snap to on the outside edge. That's what that second one does. I kind of like that one again. Um, so there we go. That's five, seven. Now we've jumped back in here to um, diameter, five, seven, and five eighths. So if I click on this mode here, that'll give me a different, oh, maybe it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't need, it needs a circle to do that one. So let's try a circle here and let's grab that again. We'll grab that third mode. And now with a circle, we get that little mode because it needs the center of the circle to show three foot, three and a half. Um, and what's this last one? Oh, just pointing at it. That's kind of useful too. Uh, and that's just the radius pointing at it. It's exactly the same as this one, but it's radius instead of diameter. So all these tools behave basically the same way. It's just what style you like. Um, and I'm getting those simply by just clicking on a round shape. If it's a round shape that it will let you do that too, you can just click on it. Oh, so you see by moving it into the inside here, I got the dimension moved across the radius. So lots of different ways. It just comes down to style, how you like it to work. Um, the center point, center mark tool is a one trick pony. It just basically does that. Um, that's great for machine parts. If you need to find the exact center of something, just clicking on a circle. I don't think it works on these shapes. I mean, yeah, you need, it needs to be a circle. So even though this is a circle, it's not really a circle anymore. You can get a radius off of these things, but you can't get a center point. So if you need to find that center point, you're gonna have to do it manually. Uh, but you know, one click to get that center point. You can add links to a document. I've never done that, but apparently you can do that. The, uh, the break line tool is kind of fun. If you've got a, let's just throw on a couple of 
lines here. So say you need to break an object here, you know, you can draw these by hand, or you can use these little break tools. And by the way that you click on it, oh, I didn't quite get it right there. Click off from the edge and then I'll click to the beyond the other edge and there you go a little break tool you've got a bunch of different styles here you can say is it straight is it curved how big are the are the uh, the breaks how uh, how high are they lots of different ways that you can change that I guess I need to change it in the object info after I've created it so we'll go to curve or to arc um, whichever style you like the height of you know how big is the the zigzag that's that's kind of a fun tool I do use that occasionally um, this guy right here, the constraint tool here, I'm not exactly sure what these do. Well, I need to look into that. Um, this uh, this isn't, hasn't always been here, but there's some cool stuff there. Um, the tape measure tool is actually pretty useful. Let me go back to one of these complicated shapes. And we might say, hang on, come on back. That, well, actually, let's use this one. It's less crowded. So if I wanted to get the total perimeter of this shape, it's there by default on the object info. Just grab the object info and... There it is, perimeter, right there. It's 37 foot five and some change around the outside. But say again, I need to add some trim on just these two sides, or maybe just these three sides, this side and this side and this side. I don't care about these two sides. The tape measure tool is great for that. You can just click on the one point. You can see there's an insertion point in this length tracing me around and total length. Right now they're exactly the same because I only have one corner. So as soon as I click onto this corner, now I've got length, eight foot nine, so that's how long and some change, how long that edge is. Now I've got two different numbers. My second length here, my, my length is now four foot two, but total length is adding those two up together. So if I click over here, I can see, well, that side is four foot one and a little bit. Click, and then this side, that side's six eleven and a little bit. Uh, but the total length is 19 foot 10 and uh, 0.3. So I know I'm gonna need 20 feet of trim to uh, wrap around those three sides of the shape. Just double click when you're done and it goes away. Nice thing about the tape measure tool is it's not creating any kind of object. You could do uh, unconstrained dimension here at a two constrained and then add them up yourself or you could just use the tape measure tool, get the number you need and then it doesn't leave anything on the screen when you're done. It's exactly the same thing as the protractor tool it works just like the uh, angular dimension tool, but it's just a measuring tool. So you just say, well, what is that? That's uh, 35 degrees. And as soon as you click, 135 degrees, excuse me. And as soon as you click, it disappears because it's just giving you that number. It's not actually drawing anything on your screen. Notes tool, you know, they're kind of fun, but I don't typically tend to use it. I draw my own, oh, it's over here on my other screen. You can type in, add a note, and you can type in new note and then say okay, and then you've got a series of notes. Um, it's nice and tidy, but you know I tend to do it just, just with a text tool. Um, you've got a couple of different little editing tools, a red line tool, and the stipple tool, and the revision cloud tool. Again, don't use those very often. Um, I've covered the sheet border before. That's, that's actually kind of, oh, there's a lot in there, so I won't talk about it now. Um, but it's also pretty straightforward as well once you start playing with it. I, however, love these, the drawing label tools, and then we've got our reference marker tools. These are great here. The drawing label lets you just drop a, uh, a drawing label, and then you can enter in all kinds of stuff in these fields, and then you get the name, and the scale is there, and then you can uh, say, well, what do you want to appear inside the, um, the circle? Uh, I like to use the top number being the number of that drawing and the bottom number being the sheet layer. You can divide it. Um, you can say basically anything you want in it. It's, it's, it's a pretty neat tool that lets you just kind of click one one click and drop in a, um, a label. Um, that's handy. The reference mark tool, same thing. I use that for um, elevation markers or section markers. You have the op option to choose what style it is. And then the same thing. You can, you can add this other information on here, drawing number, sheet number. So I can say that that's going to be, you know, drawing uh, drawing number one on plate A1, uh, or however you want those to read. Uh, you, and you've got a lot of control over the size of it, over the style of the arrow, or you know, all kinds of things that make the arrow solid or not solid. Uh, and that's um, that's fun. I have my arrow, my fill color set to white here, so we're not changing that. But if I change it to another color and then say solid, then now I've got a red arrow in there. So lots of fun things that you can do with the um, uh, this little tool here. Uh, same thing here with the section elevation tool that lets you just quickly drop in a section marker um, and there you get all that. And then again, all of this, the way this all reads and the way it all looks is controlled through the object info palette. If you need a compass, north arrow tool, there's a couple of data stamp tools and this is the room 
name tool. If you're laying out a whole apartment building or something, you can use that. I don't ever use these. Um, a scale bar tool I will occasionally use here, and it looks by default it looks kind of goofy, um, but you can say. Uh, how many divisions do you have? How? What are the shape of the divisions and what are the styles? A lot of different styles in here, like the box style. Um, and that gives you um, the, uh, they're all uh, zeroed out because I didn't actually enter in any information. But that gives you that little scale tool. So if you know your drawing is going to get photocopied a lot, you might throw one of those on there and make that make a lot of sense. Um, if you've got uh, the bridge line tool, if you're doing electrical circuitry or something like that, that's a useful tool to have. There's a radial grid and a, uh, rectangular grid, those are useful. Oh, I'm really big. Uh, you can lay out how many divisions there are, they are, and I got basically, I guess I have just uh, four divisions that I double clicked on. But so you can make that as, as detailed a grid as you want. That's pretty cool. Uh, the center line marker is just that. You just click and enter a center line marker. I'll make it really big so you can see it. And there it is. That's just saving you the trouble of typing a C, typing an L, setting the fills to none overlapping them, dragging them over to your center line. You just click. Um, I think I've added these are welding styles. I don't think these are here by default, but you can add in welding symbols um, and a few other tools to your uh, tool sets. So there's a lot of stuff that's in here. I, I, I recommend that you play with it um, for a bit and see all what's in here. There's some things that can save you some time. You might be doing things manually that you could be doing with a couple of clicks by using things that are in the, the tool sets. So hopefully that has given you uh, some kind of sense of what all of the dimension tools are in Vectorworks uh, in this series of three tutorials. I'd recommend that you go back, take a look at the other two if you haven't seen them. And uh, if you've got any questions, throw it in the comment lines and I'll look forward to answering those in the future. Thanks a lot.